sport fans, this is Bill Riley, your state tournament public address announcer for the past seven years, speaking with highlights of the 54 girls state tournament. This 1954 tournament was one of the greatest, and for each session, capacity crowds jammed Drake Stadium in Des Moines. Newspaper, radio, and television coverage of the tournament again, greatest in history. And now, the semi-final round games. The first of the two semi-final round games, West Liberty meets Oakland. West Liberty from Muscatine County. Population 1,860, 132 in the high school at West Liberty. And incidentally, West Liberty with the ball in the white uniforms. Oakland from Pottawatomie County. Population of the Oakland city, 1,315. 119 in Oakland High School, 78 of that number girls. The West Liberty team, coached by Grover Hedeman, 47 graduate of Upper Iowa. Oakland coached by O. E. Lester, 1928 graduate of Kirksville, Missouri teachers. This semi-final round game, West Liberty and Oakland. West Liberty defeated Ware in an overtime in the first round of play in the tournament. Then West Liberty defeated Randall in the quarterfinal round to move to this semifinal round game. Oakland defeated Sacred Heart of Monticello in the first round, then topped Farnhamville in the quarterfinal round of play. At the end of the first quarter of this semifinal round game, Oakland was leading the West Liberty team 20 to 14. Both semifinal round games were outstanding in this year's tournament. West Liberty, the forwards, Orma Chelf, Janet Walker, Bernice Yaley, and Sandra Billick. Guards for West Liberty, Ruth Hale, Betty Peterson, Janet Ping, and Mary Ann Watson. For Oakland, forwards, Carolyn Heckman, Madonna Leader, Nancy Ellis. The halftime score, Oakland 39, West Liberty 32 in quite a ball game. In the guard court for Oakland in this semifinal round game of the 54 tournament, Lois Danker, Gloria Sickman, Carol Bain, and Madeline Gregg. In the third period of play, again very close, Oakland was holding a 52 to 46 advantage at the end of the third quarter in this semifinal round game. Scoring in the ball game, West Liberty, Janet Walker scored 26 points in the ball game, Arma Chelf 23, Bernice Yaley 13. Oakland, and Oakland now with the ball, Carolyn Heckman scored 27 points. Madonna Leader scored 37 points in the game. Nancy Ellis, nine points. West Liberty and Oakland fighting for the right to be in the championship game of the 54 tournament. Remember that first quarter score was 20 to 14, Oakland. The halftime score was 39-32, Oakland. The third period score, 52-46, Oakland. And we're now in the fourth period of action in this semifinal round game. Capacity crowds, as always, jamming Drake Fieldhouse for the 54 tournament. Oakland continuing to pour them in. Carolyn Heckman, the great pivot star for the Oakland club. In the closing minutes of the ball game, West Liberty in control of the ball in their forward court. Officiating at the 1954 tournament, excellent. And the ball game is over. The winners, Oakland. And Oakland advances to the final round. The score, Oakland, 74. West Liberty, 66. Iowa Girls Athletic Union and tournament officials are interviewed by Harry Burrell on television from the left, John King of Richland, Lovell Diddy, Missouri, M.A. Cornman, Des Moines, Doyle Carpenter, Onawa, Bert McGrain, and Jack North of Des Moines.
Now we're ready for the second semi-final round game of the 54 tournament. Holstein, in control of the ball now in the dark uniforms. Garnavillo, now in control of the ball in the light uniforms. Garnavillo, of course, the defending champions. Undefeated in season's play, trying for that second state championship, but meeting a scrappy Holstein team. Holstein from Ida County, population 1,300. 121 high school at Holstein, of that number, 66 girls. Holstein coached by Russ Cry, 39 graduate of Morningside. Garnavillo from Clayton County, population 775 in the high school, of that number, 58 girls. The defending champions, coached this year by Bob Allen, 47 graduate of Upper Iowa. Holstein defeated Marengo in the first round of tournament play, then topped Tingley in the quarterfinal round. Garnavillo defeated Valley of West Des Moines in the first round and Seymour in the quarterfinals. In this semifinal round game now in progress, Garnavillo led Holstein 10 to 6 at the end of the first period. Typical of Garnavillo play, ball control, not scoring too many points. And at the end of the first period, 10 to 6. For Holstein, Forwards, Mary Jane Leonard, Jerry Jean Cole, Lois Schrader, and Joan Karstens. Guards for Holstein, Verna Lechband, Shirley Scherner, Nancy Jansen, and Dorothy Werner. For Garnavillo, forwards, Sandra Feet, Jean Overbeck, Sandra Eberhard, and Audrey Teasy. Guards for Garnavillo, Sue Bird, Joanne Meyer, Marjorie Kynes, and Kay Overbeck. Now we see play in the closing phases of the first half of this game. Between Garnavillo and Holstein and halftime score, 29 for Garnavillo, 14 for Holstein. The second half of the semifinal round game begins. Garnavillo in control of the ball. Evidence throughout tournament play, the ball control of Garnavillo. Scoring for this semifinal round game, for Holstein, Mary Jane Leonard had 12 points, Lois Schrader, nine points, and Jerry Jean Cole, six points. For Garnavillo, Sandra Feet, 17 points, Jean Overbeck, 12 points, Sandra Eberhard, 10, and Audrey Teasy, 10 points. Garnavillo, with balanced scoring in their forward court, four forwards who could score those baskets. Play continues now in the third period of this semifinal round game. At the end of the third period of play, Garnavillo continued to lead 39 to 23 over the Holstein team. And you see evidence again now as play continues of the ball control. Practiced throughout tournament, and particularly in this game, by the Garnavillo team. A particular note of interest in this tournament, the 1954 tournament, was the fact that Tuesday afternoon, the first round play was a complete sellout with crowds around the floor and every game thereafter a sellout. And the ball game is over. Garnavillo, defending champions, advancing to the final round for the second consecutive year. Garnavillo 49, Holstein 29. Now the parade of champions, Farnhamville from Calhoun County, coached by Bill Hansen, 25 victories, three losses, Farnhamville High School. Farragut from Fremont County, coached by Superintendent Oren Mann, 22 wins, three losses, Farragut High School. Marengo from Iowa County, coached by D, 24 wins, two losses, Marengo High School. 
Melvin from Osceola County, coached by Jack Argetsinger. 22 wins, three losses, Melvin High School. Sacred Heart of Monticello from Jones County, coached by R.V. Mullen. 28 wins, eight losses, Sacred Heart from Monticello. Randall from Hamilton County, coached by Superintendent W.V. Devine. 29-2 this year, Randall High School. Seymour from Wayne County, coached by Superintendent Earl O. Berg. 27 wins, one loss, Seymour High School. Tingley from Ringgold County, coached by Superintendent M. H. Obermeyer. 18 and eight, Tingley High School. Ware from Pocahontas County, coached by Dale McIntosh. 25 and two this year, Ware High School. Valley High School, West Des Moines from Polk County, coached by Bob Anderlich. 19 wins, five losses, Valley from West Des Moines. Williams from Hamilton County, coached by Jim Opowine. 18 wins, six losses, Williams High School. Yarmouth from Des Moines County, coached by Frank E. Williams. 23 wins, three losses, Yarmouth High School, the parade of champions. Teams in the tournament excluding the four semifinal round teams. And now the game of games, the 54 championship game. Starting lineups for Oakland from right to left. Number 26, Carolyn Heckman, Jr. Number 38, Madonna Leader, Sr. Number 25, Nancy Ellis, Sophomore. Guards, Lois Danker, Jr. Carol Bain, Sr. Gloria Sickman, Sr. Starting lineup, Garnavillo, forwards from left to right. Number 22, Sandra Eberhard, Sr. Number 23, Jean Overbeck, Sophomore. Number 45, Sandra Feet, Jr. Starting guards, number 33, Sue Bird, Sr. Number 35, Joanne Meyer, Jr. And number 32, Marjorie Kine, Sr. And we're ready to go. Tremendous excitement captures this great crowd as the championship game begins. Oakland, one of the big tournament favorites, out to topple the champions, Garnavillo in control of the ball. Garnavillo and scoring immediately in the very opening phases of this first period of the championship game. It was a slow start that may have cost Oakland the game, however, during the first three minutes of this first quarter. Garnavillo scored five field goals out of only six attempts to jump into a commanding 10 to nothing lead over Oakland. Madonna Leader finally scored a free throw after three minutes to start the Oakland scoring machine in motion. And from that time forward, it was a tremendous struggle by the fighting Oakland team as it battled to overtake Garnavillo. A struggle that was to fall just short of its objective, but a struggle that won the praise of all Iowa. While we watch the first quarter play, information about the title contenders. Garnavillo from Clayton County. Population of the town, 700, 75 in the high school, 58 girls. Coached by Bob Allen, 47 graduate of Upper Iowa. Now this was Coach Allen's first year at Garnavillo. He coached at Lamont before taking over the champions, winners of the title last year. Garnavillo has a two-year record of 56 straight victories without a defeat. The leading scorer for Garnavillo, Sandra Feet, who has a career scoring record of 3,471 points. To rank third in the all-time scoring records behind Norma Schulte of Monona and Jeanette Gates Snavely of Curlew. Sandra Feet still has one year of competition remaining. At the end of the first period, Garnavilla 14, Oakland 4. And now we move into the second quarter of play. And to the Oakland team, now in control of the ball, for four times, state championship contenders in tournament play. Pottawatomie County, population 1,315. Oakland coached by one of the state's top coaches, Superintendent O.E. Lester. Coach Lester has brought teams to the state meets for 10 years, having coached at Hartley, Van Meter, and Hillsboro before taking over at Oakland in 1946. Oakland came to the final round game with a regular season's record of 29 consecutive victories. Now in this second half of play, Oakland and Garnavillo both found the basket and started blistering the net as the tempo of the play increased. Garnavillo scored 17 points in the second quarter, while Oakland scored 16. 
Madonna leader, the brilliant out-shooting Oakland forward, led the attack for Oakland with five field goals and a free throw in that second period. Sandra Feet scored only three points on three free throws in this second quarter, as the Oakland guards worked effectively against Feet. However, Eberhard and Overbeck continued to hit from outside the free throw circle to keep that Garnavillo lead. Now we're coming into the closing seconds of the first half of play. And again, of course, it was Garnavillo with that great advantage in the first quarter, an advantage that they worked to protect and control throughout the remainder of the game. But the tempo continues. Madonna leader, a free throw. Incidentally, Madonna leader competed in the free throw tournament, the state tournament this year, as did Sandra Feet representing Garnavillo. Again, in this championship game, we saw evidence of ball control. Garnavillo team always controlling the ball, taking only the absolute positive shot, the sure shot. Sandra Eberhard and Jean Overbeck, number 22 and 23, controlling the ball from out. Sandra Feet, of course, in under the basket. Great defensive work, evidenced there by Joanne Meyer, the six foot junior guard, all state, Garnavillo. Again, shooting from out, and another basket for Garnavillo. Particularly effective for the Oakland team was Nancy Ellis, the sophomore, great rebounder, the halftime. Garnavello, 31, Oakland, 20. At the halftime intermission, the 1954 state free throw champion presented by Luffel Diddy, director of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union for the Northeast. The champion, Carlene Jensen, 16, junior at Garwin High School. Carlene hit 24 out of 25 to win the title and tie the all-time state tournament record set in 1941 by Loris Brown of Marengo. Ready now for the second half of the championship game. In this third period of play, the pattern continued of Garnavillo control play. But both teams played on even terms in the third period each team scoring 13 points in the third quarter. Incidentally, in this period, Sandra Feet began hitting for Garnavillo, accounting for nine of the champion's 13 points in this quarter. You see the control ball. Garnavillo holding the ball, of course. There's the pass in to Sandra. Dribbles clear around under the basket and passes out. Now that's what happened throughout the tournament play. Sandra Feet passing out so many times to the out forwards. Everhard and Overbeck. The pivot work by Carolyn Heckman, number 26. Excellent shot. A junior, incidentally, five feet nine. And now the coaches take a moment for a few words to their teams. Coach Lester for Oakland. Here's Bob Allen speaking to his Garnavillo team. And now we continue with this third quarter of play. Oakland control the ball. Trying to get in and make those baskets so very necessary. Down a leader driving in. Again, we'd like to mention the officiating was excellent at the tournament this year. Again, you see the tremendous crowds that jammed Drake Stadium for every session, and particularly the grand championship night. Some 700 teams began participating in sectional play weeks ago, and only two teams remain. And they're in the third period, and the score at the end of the third period, Garnavillo 44, Oakland 33, just one quarter remains. In this hectic fourth quarter, the crowd sensed the Oakland attack was gradually wearing Garnavillo down, and the possibility of Oakland's victory was now evident and possible trailing 11 points at the start of this fourth quarter, Oakland cut the lead to only eight points with about two minutes to play.
of those long two minutes, faced the Oakland team. And Garnavillo, the champions, of course, playing, as always, control ball. Oakland gains possession again, and the crowd again cheers them as they try to overtake the champions. Tremendous play under the boards. There's the rebounding. Paid dividends for Garnavillo. They're tall guards controlling the Oakland offensive basket. Another free throw for Garnavillo. Very important point in this fourth period as the seconds tick away. Not much time remains now. A few points separating the teams. About this time in the ball game, Sue Bird left the game on fouls for Garnavillo, a serious blow to the champions' backcourt defense. Another important free throw. Carolyn Heckman for Oakland. One minute, 38 seconds remain. Garnavillo 48, Oakland 42. Now, how important it is as the game continues. Just six points, 48-42. With a minute, 15 seconds to play, Carolyn Heckman scored a free throw. Five points difference, 48-43. Garnavillo fighting like true champions to hold that lead and their title. But can they hold the title? Well, only time will tell as the clock ticks those seconds away now. Garnavilla controlling the ball. Control, control, that means the ball game. Now, Oakland has the ball again. Can they do it? In and out again. A basket by Carolyn Heckman with 31 seconds remaining. Just 31 seconds to play. And it's 48-45. Just three points separating the teams, but the 30 seconds disappear. And the winner, Garnavillo, 48, Oakland, 45. And again, champions of the state of Iowa. The great team from Garnavillo. There it is, 48-45. What a ball game it was. The presentation of awards by John H. King of Richland, acting in the absence of O.H. Rutenbeck of Avoca, president of the board of the Girls Athletic Union, who was ill. Fourth place team, West Liberty. In the consolation round game, Holstein did West Liberty 64-52. And there they are, the third place winners, Holstein High School. The number two team in Iowa in 1954, the great team from Oakland. And now for the second year, the champions from Garnavillo High School.